arrival to the house at 8%. And that's uh -oh. pre-food. So, uh -oh. yeah, we're definitely pushing the limits here. Uh -oh. But uh, I'm still trying to not hit that supercharger. Pray for us. <laughs> I'm Mark. I'm Morgan. This, this is, is Willow. Willow. And, and we, we are Grove, Grove Electric. Electric. Here in Quispamsis, Canada. I don't remember exactly which province this is, but... Either way. New Brunswick. Maybe. Oh, we're still in New Brunswick? I don't know. It's ginormous. It is. Know. It's been beautiful. The roads are really nice. And yeah. it's honestly surprising every time I go somewhere that has a cold climate and they have nice roads because I'm like, How? Pennsylvania roads suck. <laughs> and I don't know. I think I said this 19 times in my video. Clearly, I need to move. But either way. Um, yeah, it is gorgeous here. I'm so happy that we were able to cross the border in the daylight. And so this location, while we are having some supercharging that we're going to film in a minute, had an energy station and so we had to come and check it out see what yeah it is. so it's this right here energy by nb power uh from irving and they have the chatamo connector for your nissan leaf and then they have the ccs connector here for every other car besides tesla and, and then, then they have one. something behind here and i don't know what it is and i'm not paying to pull it out but so show There's them the flap. Some type of cable. See, that here. would like fold out yeah. once you unlock it with money and then you would get your charger. I don't know what it is. So yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. We don't know. It's a surprise really. But hold on. Let's just, because I tried to show you the guys this the other night. So this is the CCS connector. This is what North America essentially is their standard. This is your DC and this is your AC. So at home I have this and then I plug in my adapter and then this is for the actual fast charging. This thing is huge, it's big and bulky. It's actually most similar to grabbing like a, a nozzle for a, a gasoline pump. It works, but it depends on the network if, uh, if it works well. Now we're gonna show you the Tesla. The Tesla connector. So this is the Tesla supercharger, and you've seen this through many of our videos, but Tesla's trying to make this the North American charging standard called NACS. This is AC and DC. This is the same connector across the board for charging a Tesla. It's not really heavy or clunky or like cumbersome. It's actually incredible and I love it. And I wish this was the standard connector. But I want to talk about a little bit more in depth about these uh, stations here. Whoop, watch out, there's a ledge there. So over here is what's called a cabinet. These cabinets are what house all the electricity powering these supercharging locations. So as you can see, they are labeled because these are 150 kilowatts. Cabinet 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B. So now, if there's a problem with one of these units, they can just open up this cabinet and hopefully figure out the issue to solve and correct uh, the problem that's occurring. But also, you'll notice there is no screen on Tesla superchargers. That's because everything is fully integrated within the app and the car. Just finished up charging in Quispamsic, and because we were that was going to be a dinner stop, before we started charging, we just put it up to 100% just to see how far we could get while we ate dinner. And we actually went from 24% to 98%. So a huge charge. Uh, we are gonna charge again at least once, maybe twice before we get to the house. It's currently 8.40 p.m. so it is starting to get late. And um, that charge cost us $26.10 Canadian. So whatever that is in conversion, that's what it cost us. And now Morgan's gonna drive a little bit and I'm gonna just uh, be a good co-pilot. I did my uh, about two hour stint, not even. And it's dark and it's really hard to stare at a dark road. So that means it's my turn to drive. <laughs> so I gotta break out the rain because oh, yeah. it is 1043. Next charging mm -hmm. location, we're gonna get there about 1230. And then it's a short drive, I think after that, yeah. less than an hour. But we do have to stop one more time. We stopped here from 48, was it 48? 48% mm -hmm. to 83%. We're really trying to stop every two to three hours because Willie's belly is not mm -hmm. doing the best. She's been awesome though. If she has mm -hmm. to go potty, she lets us know. Yeah. She does this like she's, grumble thing. Yeah, she's a rock star in the car. I can't yeah. believe it. She's so great. So then we just pull Hi. over and 
Yeah. Say, I am the best. Yeah. So this Irving, super nice, convenient spot, uh, very clean, and they have Tesla charging, and of course they also have the energy. Oh, thank you for the kisses, baby. I love you too. <laughs> they also have the. Okay, we don't let me film. Um, and then they also have the energy charging for the CCS cars, which is cool. But uh, eight Tesla chargers to one CCS. Yeah. So step up your game, CCS. And it cost us uh, twelve dollars and ninety six cents Canadian. Canadian. Also at this charging location, they had a Bark Park, which is an Irving special. I really, besides like the, sh um, the what was it? The drive-ins? The drive-ins? What drive -ins? Called? Sheet? It's not sheets. Um, Sonic? Sonic drive-ins. Yeah, when we, we were down. Yeah, in, down yeah. south they had them. Oh, well, we were west then. Yeah, down south, down west. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, they had them. But, um, and then we saw like one when we had our South Carolina trip as well. So... It's really cool that this whole chain has them sporadically. We've seen one in passing, and then this one actually had it at the supercharger stop. So, very awesome. And oh, really. it's cold. It's 43 really cold. degrees. Yeah, so no like more 70 cold. degree. All in one day. We went from 41 to 70, and now back to 43. So, whew, yep. chilly day. Final supercharging stop for this evening, for today. Not this evening. The whole day. Uh, currently, 12.31 a.m., we're officially insane again. We're always doing this to ourselves. Uh, finished off the rain. So last charge was in Al Truca. Al Aulak, yeah, A U L A C. Aulak. Anyway, we are finally at Enfield uh, charging location. Once again in Irving. There's also Tim Hortons, Burger King, um, and we are in Enfield, Nova Scotia. We're going to charge up just so we can get to the house with around 50%. So right now we're at 35%. So we'll see what that's going to be. But hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going to be able to charge. At our house for the week. At the week. house for the week. That's the goal. So tomorrow we will definitely record as to how we're doing so in this country. Yeah. But we're going to get out, walk Willow. Walk Willow. And uh, we'll keep an eye on the supercharging to arrive at the house for around 50%. Right, so we just got done charging up here. Um, where are we again? Halifax? Uh, no. Well, Enfield. it is Halifax, oh, but is it? it's Enfield is the name of the station. I don't really understand why the station and the town don't always line up, but yeah. that's that. Now turn and then right on to Highway 2. It was $13.30 Canadian. And so we'll figure all that out later. Um, but yeah, this one also had another bark park, but it's now 37 degrees out. So we did not take Willow all the way over to the bark park, but we may come back later this week, of course. We're gonna arrive at the house at 40% charge. Just finished up a really nice little hike. Uh, we got to one part of the trail and it was just like a straight vertical. Straight so up. we decided to turn around, especially since Willow. this was Willow's first ever experience little at hike. hiking. So hike. it was a blast, a really nice little trail here and gorgeous scenery. Uh, normally there's water there, but it's extremely low tide today. So it was a, it was a good hike. It was called Jordy. Jordy. Jordy Trail, yeah. A lot of fun. And mm -hmm. the car did incredible. We left the town or the house where we were at like 60-ish percent, and we got here at 57. And it's a 40-minute drive. So um, super efficient, as you guys know. 
lower speeds, better efficiency, less wind resistance. <laughs> Just having a blast here. It's so beautiful. I'm trying to enjoy today because the weather for the rest of the week is not quite the same. So just like our trip to Virginia, we asked the place that we were staying if they had any plugs outside where we could plug in our Tesla. And they sent us a picture of an outlet, which is this outlet here. And so after looking at that outlet and actually doing quite a bit of research, we realized that it's an RV outlet, standard RV outlet called a TT30. Well, Tesla does not actually offer that connector for the mobile charging unit here. However, we looked on the internet and we found a company called EVSE Connectors and they do offer the TT30. So while we are here, we are able to charge using this. So when you're traveling with an electric car, make sure you ask wherever you're going if they have uh, charging available to you or if they have outlets available to you and then you'll know with your mobile connector what you need so you can charge your car. But guys, look at this view. Absolutely gorgeous. We have had the opportunity to look at this all week long and so even though we like to go out and do a lot of things it was just so nice to be in the house it's so quiet so peaceful good morning it is another day in beautiful nova scotia it's a little bit cloudy today so not the beautiful weather that we had the other day but we're looking forward to traveling to a dog park for Willow to check out. A nice off-leash dog park that Morgan found on... Bring Fido, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Bring Fido. If you have a dog, get the app. It's awesome. We were able to get up to 100% using the mobile connector at the Airbnb. And we want to see if we can just travel all day hitting the dog park and the other couple errands that we have without using the Tesla supercharger network at all. Even if we roll in at 1%, the goal is to just not touch the public network. All right. We have made it to the dog park today. <laughs> we did hit some more bands of rain, so that was kind of upsetting. But um, hopefully the rain holds off while we're here so Willie can play. Two other dogs just showed up as well. So she's going to have some playmates. So it looks like a pretty good park. Yeah. But there's um, water. And we know Willow loves water, so we're nervous if she's going to jump into it or not. <laughs> We're at 67%. We drove 140 kilometers. Uh, we can provide the conversion to that on the screen. But yeah, more than enough range. So I don't think we're going to have any issue whatsoever. We just got done at the dog park. And at first I was a little nervous because it was raining, as I said. But then another dog car pulled up. They had two dogs in there. And then after we did like a half lap around the park, we caught up with them. And they were so nice. So nice. So nice. Because they even gave us meters. a free Turn right onto Robin Which Street. we're in need because, because there's a water feature at this dog park. And, and it was like a marsh. And Lolo decided to go in. She did. She loved playing and splashing around with other dogs. And it's chilly here. But she Freezing. still had so much fun and made new friends. And she did so good. So we're going to go give her a bath, get her all washed up, smelling good now, so before we go back to our Airbnb. Street. I'm sure that they would appreciate that. <laughs> well, it's so weird though, because where we came from, it was 47 degrees and it was hot. Like we had air conditioning on and now we're in the car and it's 45 degrees and it is freezing. freezing. So I have no idea what changed between where we came from and where we are, but yeah. either way. I'm cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a bit, bit more chilly than we were expecting it to be up here, but that's what you get when you drive two hours north, I guess. So, oh, yeah, yeah, and we found out of some other locations uh, over here that we might check out tomorrow or uh, later on in the week, but also some other locations that we're going to have to schedule another road trip. Definitely. It was really, really awesome. Officially back from the dog park and she had an amazing time and thankfully we were able to bathe her Because people are awesome, but we got back. We're at 16% So no need to touch the supercharging network at all. We drove 362 kilometers and by no means was I hyper miling or anything like I was driving this car Probably more than I would drive a normal gasoline car uh, we had air con on, we had heat on when, you know, that changed, so. And we also ran into an accident that happened, so we yeah. were held up on the highway a little bit, so we are just sitting in traffic. 
like a normal person would so yeah but it's seven o'clock at night so we've been out all day and what other vehicle other than an electric vehicle can you leave your house fully and just come back home and plug back in none and i used to say oh i would love to have a gasoline pump in my house but honestly why i can just use electric and i'm so happy that we do now but we did get a message on the screen which will show it says there will be significantly less energy available from your battery if it gets colder we recommend charging now which and look at this one too that just popped up oh and uh insufficient charge sentry mode currently unavailable so anything below i guess 20 percent, you can't have sentry mode on but since we are able to charge here, we have the correct adapter. Check out EVSE adapters if you need an adapter that you can't purchase from Tesla. Uh, it's been flawless. It's worked great with the Tesla mobile connector. And thankful to the hosts of this beautiful lake house that we are able to charge here. And um, yeah, and basically run free on electricity. So it's pretty awesome. But let's talk about the 19 boxes of food my wife has here. Yeah, so we found this great local pub that we wanted to try a few things from. So I was placing my order and then she said, I don't know if this would interest you at all, but today is Taco Tuesday. So do you want to do a buy one, get one half off tacos? And I said, well, it doesn't really hurt, so why not? So <laughs> I got a second dose of tacos here. So we each have our own tacos and we won't have to fight over that third one, you know, that awkward number when you only have two people. It's not like it's going to go to Willow. Mm -mm. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have tacos, a burger to share, and then, of course, a little seafood appetizer. So we're going to dig in and <laughs> refill yeah. ours. Yeah, we're starving. It's been a long day. Good morning. Yeah. Another day in Nova Scotia. Uh, it is such a beautiful place. A little chilly, a little on bit. a little chilly side, yes. but there's nothing that a jacket and a winter hat beanie uh, can't fix. Willow is rearing a go. We're about to take a hike on a trail that's literally down the street from our house. So where we're staying, walk, I don't know, maybe what, like a quarter, quarter mile, mile, not even. Yeah. And it is called Little River Falls. Hopefully we do make it to the waterfall, if not. It's all for nothing. No, I'm just kidding. We love getting out and walking, so and it's, it's good. And it's the first time I get to wear this fancy uh, dog dad leash thing. So mm -hmm. you, it's a belt, and then it's got two grips, you know, if you need to keep her close or a little bit further away. But I can be hands-free and walk Willie. So it's pretty awesome. But she is ready to go. She is pulling Hello. me along. Will, say hi. Say oh, hi, you're so baby. good. Alrighty. So yeah, let's go check out these waterfalls. Well, sadly, we're not going to get to the falls. Uh, we got up to this point, down below that point where that broken, not this one, but the other broken tree, it gets pretty steep. And I don't think that it's safe to continue on with Willow. With Willow. So unfortunately, that's all the waterfalls we're going to see is from up here. But it was really fun. It was also extremely muddy. My shoes are a mess. But it is beautiful being back here. We'll see if we can find some other waterfalls today somewhere else, maybe. That's not a death climb to the bottom. No, <laughs> I'm just Yeah, kidding. I did read in the description on All Trails app that there was like a very steep climb at the end where there's ropes available but the trees around here have fallen recently so i'm not sure with all the rain that they've had that we can trust them so we'll yeah. just turn back and keep it safe for this little trip out yeah, don't but think... it is over a mile now that we've gone so it's a good hike first time being in the tesla today after our nice little hike willow took a little bit of a nap and morgan and i just kind of hung out unfortunately the weather is still not great so we are just gonna go for a drive into wolfsville uh, probably grab a crepe and maybe get some pizza for dinner. I'm not sure yet, but just want to touch on the fact that since we knew we weren't going to be going very far today, we only charged up to about 65% just so that way we could go to Wolfsville and do a little bit. We There was no reason to charge more than that and there is no benefit and actually it's a detriment to let your battery sit at a high percentage for a long period of time. So we have 65%, we're gonna do a little bit of driving here, and then tonight, we're gonna to decide what we're doing tomorrow. It's unfortunate that it is raining. Uh, we really wanted to do a lot more, but you know, just take each day 
with what God gives us. So remember when I said we were just going into town and we were going to get some crepes? and Well, we did just get some crepes and they were incredible. For the full review, make sure you check out Grove Grubbin. Link in the description below. But Morgan goes, I really want to go to this like cider place. And I said, oh, sure, no problem. We have plenty of range. It's an hour away. Yeah. All Sorry. right, so arrival there, 38%. Arrival back home, round trip, 11%. We're going to see if we can do it again without touching the supercharger network. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you got to tell me these things. That's okay. Spontaneity. Well, honestly, What's better than that? It's really because the weather is super chilly. It is and so cold. it's very windy. Yes. And Willow is exhausted from the dog park and our three mile hike already today. So. She wants nothing to do with no. moving her legs. She <laughs> doesn't want to go anywhere. So I thought a drive, an hour drive each way would be great for yeah. all of us. So here great. we go. We did make it to the. Was it East? Down. East Coast Cider Company. East Coast Cider Company. We had a blast. We got to talk to a bunch of locals, had wonderful conversations, and we made it there at 39%, which is actually 1% more than we thought we were going to originally make it. However, now we're on our way back, and apparently there is no food open after 9 p.m. Zero. Nothing's open. We're starving. Hungry. And the car Fantastic. now says arrival to the house at 8%. And that's uh -oh. pre-food. So, uh -oh. yeah, we're definitely pushing the limits here. Uh -oh. But uh, I'm still trying to not hit that supercharger. Pray for us. <laughs> so something I wanted to add about the two people that we met and were talking with at the cidery were that they knew what two road signs were that we did not have any idea about. Well, let's start off with the road signs are, are a little odd. But they're similar. But there was a few that we were honestly looking up. And there is still one in this picture that we still do not know. And that bottom one in the middle, the at sign, what could that possibly mean? And honestly, we asked them and they were, I don't know. Floored. They're from Canada too. They and weren't like- They traveled coast to coast. Or, yeah. Coast to coast travelers and they don't know either. So if anyone knows what that at sign is on their exit signs, that would be very helpful just to kill that curiosity. Yeah, and Morgan even Googled the signs and still, don't know. still can't figure it out. Anyway, so we did not get our pizza. Hopefully we will get it another night. But there's like nothing open. And we've been driving around and we saw this place near us uh, called Mary Brown's Chicken. And I was like, well, it's like gas station chicken. Well, it's not gas station chicken, but the one that we had seen was near a gas station. I was like, well, Royal Farm Chicken is good. It must be good. So we found a Mary Brown's. We did get to try it. This is one of their signature sandwiches, the Big Mary. It comes uh, in. Original or spicy? Original or spicy. Yeah, spicy, of course. Mm, of course. It was super good. And for the full <laughs> review, you know where to go. Grub, grubbin. But it's good. It's good chicken. Now, is it better than Zaxby's down south? No. Is it better than Mickey D's? Yes. So, yeah, um, not a healthy dinner, but hey, what the heck? You gotta do what you gotta do when the time is crunch. Also, we arrived there at 20% and our current arrival to the house is now 5%. I imagine that going down slightly, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Pray for us. Please. All right, so we're driving here and as you can see, the battery is currently at 11% and the color is yellow. So normally on the Tesla, when you have a full state of charge, the battery is like a grayish, whitish color. When you go below 20%, 19%, the battery turns yellow, like hay. And at a certain point, it's also gonna turn red. Our current arrival, it is 4%. It was 3% a few minutes ago, so I'm not exactly sure what occurred to change that. But um, yeah, we're definitely uh, pushing the limits of the car. I'm thrilled to do it and share it with you guys. I'm hoping that the battery is going to turn red at 10%, but I'm not certain that that is when it turns red. But I believe it does turn red at 10 or 9%. And uh, as you can see here in Canada, the roads are pretty dark, and we also have a little bit of drizzle happening. Okay, so it is not at 10%. 
that the battery changes, so it must be at 9%. Well, I did some Googling, and it says it's going to happen at 7, which if you watch our Las Vegas Part 1 video, you will see that happen in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. What an interesting way to do it. The other one changes at 19%, and then this one's going to change at 7 why don't they just have it change it at 5 then at that point? But we'll come back when uh, we're in the danger zone. There we are at 7% and we're still in the orange. So wow. I feel like Tesla may have changed it again and it's not going to turn red maybe until 5%. So we will come back and let you know. Well, the weirdest thing just happened. It went down a 7 as you saw previously. And it was orange and then halfway through this percentage I guess is when it decides to turn red because we are now at 7% still but now it has gone to the red zone. Officially entered the danger zone and like I said super important if you're gonna be anywhere near this level of charge you need to find charging ASAP. The car made it. We made it. 3% state of charge and a sign uh, or a warning does pop up as soon as you put the car in the park it says uh, battery very low yep three percent is very low vehicle consumes battery power while idle charge now to ensure vehicle will start and avoid potential battery damage we recommend charging now so like i said this is the danger zone people you better make sure that you can charge but yeah three percent and we drove 257 kilometers car made it and i will tell you this the accelerator pedal did become very lackadaisical at 4% state of charge. Like you use the accelerator and it's like numb. Mm -hmm. Like the car is trying to conserve as much battery and as much power as possible. So that is something I haven't really experienced because prior to this, my lowest percent was 4% and we were going to a supercharger. So I didn't even notice it really. Mm -hmm.